we have always to think about what is going to happen in the next 20 years in our field. We are just now doing a, a quite important research about the future of, uh, of longevity. Personally, you know, I, I like the idea of doing what I do for the next 50 years. Hello again and welcome to Llama, the Live Long and Master Aging podcast. I'm Peter Bowes. This is where we explore the science and stories behind human longevity. This episode is brought to you in association with Clinique La Prairie, the award-winning spa clinic and pioneering health and wellness destination nestled on the shores of Lake Geneva in Montreux, Switzerland. Combining preventative medicine with bespoke lifestyle and nutrition plans, Clinique La Prairie offers a holistic approach to living fuller, healthier, and longer lives. So what does a holistic approach to maximizing our health span really mean? Optimizing the number of years that we enjoy the best of health is certainly the goal of this podcast, and I'm delighted to be working with Clinique La Prairie to explore some of the issues in more detail detail. In this special episode, two guests. In a moment, we're going to meet Dr. Adrian Heine, who is a graduate of the Faculty of Medicine at the University of Lausanne, Switzerland, and La Prairie's medical director. But first, the clinic's CEO, Simone Gibatoni, joins me to discuss the four pillars for longevity, medical care, nutrition, movement, and well-being, which Clinique La Prairie puts at the heart of its approach to helping people live a better, healthier, and longer life. Simone, welcome to the Live Long and Master Aging podcast. Peter, thank you very much for having us today. It's a pleasure to be with you. It's really good to talk to you. And I think it's hopefully clear from my introduction that I think we share similar ideals in terms of our attitude towards right. aging and especially health span, which is why it's good to be working with you on this. Maybe we could start with a little bit of history. Talk me through the, maybe briefly, talk me through the last 90 years of Clinique La Prairie. Yes, uh, Peter, like you said, is is 90 years, so it's a long story, but really is a, is a fascinating story. Everything started here in Montreux in 1931 with uh, Dr. Nians, which was in fact an exceptional doctor. Uh, he's the doctor who invented, we could say, the cellular therapy, this uh, revitalization program, which was uh, already at that time iconic and is still today uh, our most important program. And uh, um, Dr. Nians was so famous and the result of, it, of, uh, of its work were so exceptional that uh, basically all the most famous people in the world already in the 50s started to come at Clinique La Paris. Uh, so you had uh, people like Winston Churchill, Cary Grant, Greta Garbo, of course, a lot of very famous people today. And of course, we keep uh, their name uh, confidential. Uh, started to come to La Prairie for uh, the Dr. Nian's uh, therapies. And uh, we, we can really say that, you know, uh, uh, probably you already talk a lot in your uh, podcast about medical spa. We could say that the Clinique La Prairie has been, in fact, the first medical spa because already in the 60s, um, at a certain point, the Matley family, which is uh, still today uh, owning the clinic, uh, Clinique La Prairie is a family-owned company, um, acquired the clinic and really build up this idea of medical spa, having the best uh, medical facilities uh, with uh, the best possible Swiss doctor. We have uh, over 50 doctors working in Clinique La Prairie, together with, with a wellness part and with a very sophisticated hospitality part, uh, which is, uh, again, making us able to deliver this weekly program, main, uh, the majority of our program are weekly program to our guests. And I know that the clinic values science and a lot of the work that you do there is yeah. grounded in science. And clearly over those 90 years, the science will have changed considerably. I'm just curious what you think the big developments have been over the years. Yeah, that's a, that's a key point, in fact, uh, Peter, for us. And uh, we have a team which is called, we like to call them life science team, which is continuously researching the best technologies uh, internally. We have an internal laboratories and also scouting the best technology in the market. I just give you an example of a very important collaboration for us, which is a collaboration with the Biopol, which is a startup center, uh, quite important that we have uh, uh, here in, uh, in Switzerland. 
And uh, everything we do, maybe because we have these 50 doctors, no, which are always, uh, in a way, they are, uh, they are the gatekeeper of uh, whatever we do. Everything we do uh, must be proved, um, must deliver a result. Uh, so I think that we are putting together the best of uh, really the health and the wellness uh, from a certain point of view. If we talk about the, the revitalization, which, I, as I was telling you, is our iconic program, this has gone through huge research in the last uh, 20 years. Um, we had a fantastic scientific team uh, led by uh, Professor Ernst Richel from the Borstel Group in uh, Germany. And um, today we are enriching our scientific team, always keeping in mind the main uh, teams of longevity uh, from uh, uh, nutrition uh, to brain uh, to immunity to senescent cell uh, to inflammation so always keeping the, let's say the uh, the hot topic uh, very well in target in terms of research. And Sibon, what brought you to the clinic? Because I, I know you have a, a background in business. Uh, was there something that happened in your career or, or your life that really kick-started your interest in, in this area and in health and longevity? But listen, it's, uh, um, uh, it's probably always now the, the nine things in life always come by chance. So I had the, the chance to know the, uh, the owner of the clinic. We, we have worked together uh, for many years uh, in the beauty business that uh, uh, I was running at that time. And uh, so at a certain point, we decided to start working together at the clinic, uh, which, uh, of course, for me was, uh, was, a big, uh, was a big honor to be part of uh, uh, this institution. And uh, let's say on the personal side, I always had a deep passion for the high performance in general and uh, high performance on a personal level, on the company level, uh, and of course, health and wellness, energy in, in general, I would say, Peter, is the foundation of, every, uh, of everything no, from this point of view. And I have to tell you, on top of this, uh, I, I really got incredibly passionate about this uh, vision that we built over time here in Clinic La Paris, which is helping people living a longer, healthier and better life. And uh, I mean, uh, I don't have to tell you what is the what do you want more than uh, coming to the office every day, thinking about ways to improve the life of the people. That that's really a dream from this point of view. Well, I think it's it's clearly a great job and one that you enjoy a lot. Let's bring in Dr. Adrian Heine, who is the medical director at the clinic. And uh, Adrian, let me maybe ask you the the same question. Uh, clearly, you've been a doctor all of your career. You specialize in these uh, issues that are, are focused, uh, let's say, the umbrella issue of health span and living as long as and as well as we can. What is your own philosophy towards aging? Yes, uh, thank you. Uh, thank you to be here in this podcast. So if, if we come, maybe if you want to come to this question, what is my interest in longevity? I just quickly tell you somehow where I come from, so I, I, I did medicine, I studied uh, internal medicine and I was from, basically from my studies on, I was interested in holistic uh, um, domains like uh, acupuncture, nutrition. And then I did my research work for several years in, in nutrition and that's basically combining medicine, nutrition, other, other holistic approaches and uh, science. Uh, so I, I have been, you know, also working for several years in a in a research team. So that basically uh, brought me or, or made me so interested to work with uh, Clinical Perry because Clinical Perry has the on the one side an approach which remains holistic and and natural uses natural tools to live better and live longer. And on the other side, as uh, Simone mentioned, it's uh, definitely based on research and recent, uh, recent findings, like proving some, somewhere that we are on the right track. So, so this, is, this is like my background who brought me to the interest of uh, longevity and of the philosophy of Clinical Prairie. I think it's probably fair to say that in the most recent years, it is 
developments in genetics that have been perhaps the, the biggest change in terms of very sophisticated genetic tests and how they can be integrated into a program for someone who is pursuing a long, healthy life? Exactly. So it's a good, good point. And uh, we, again, together with our doctors, but particularly with our uh, scientists, we very early in the development of genetics, we were interested in, in that perspective. Uh, and the proof is, is that it was for good because now we, we are really up to date with uh, recent methods and we are able to, to integrate these genetic and epigenetic testing methods uh, in our approach, in our individual, uh, individual approach of the, the client. So let's just dig a little deeper in terms of what it means for a client to, to go through these tests, uh, how it occurs, what they actually have to do, and what it means for them in terms of the information as they progress with their lifestyle and maybe adapt their lifestyle according to what the genetic tests discover. Exactly. For the um, clients, it's very instructive and interesting to discover more about their genetic background. You could say, why, why to go into genetics? Because it's, you cannot change it, but that's wrong. The genetic uh, background shows you what are the predispositions uh, and the risks somehow if you live a bad life or if you don't do anything against. Now, where the we come into this uh, genetic uh, rationale is that the, some trends or some indications for certain risk, let's say a uh, high risk for cardiovascular disease or a uh, high risk for diabetes, but also a predisposition, let's say, uh, to be less protected against uh, oxidative stress, that allows us actually to to tailor uh, down the the program and the recommendations uh, given to to our our clients. It's a it's a very uh, useful but also constructive process for us doctors. Now let me just say that the one of the unique advantages we have here at the clinic that is that we can get the result of the genetic test within a few days. Because if you get the result one month later or two months later, once the client is gone, it's much more difficult to factor it in in, in your uh, attitude and to, to give the recommendations. And to what extent, I'm just curious how people respond to these tests, because I think it, for many people, this is a very novel approach. This is all quite new because I think people, and you kind of referred to this, I think people have traditionally thought of their genetics and their genes as something that are, are set in stone and cannot be changed. But I think the key element is, and you've referred to this, it is what else we can do. It is the environment around us. And of course, that includes exercise and diet. So generally, how do people respond to knowing much more about themselves? No, they uh, definitely they respond uh positively now again it's it's uh it's a, a real condition that you can transmit the result personally because that that makes the the whole difference it it may be scary if you you know if you get a, a report with red and uh, green uh flashes uh, and you don't have the interpretation of of these results we use uh factors that are linked or related to predisposition factors of uh, that influence lifestyle, that influence some preventative factor, let's say eye diseases that you can prevent if you go to the eye doctor. So, so we choose our profiles also in the way that it is, gives, uh, gives something uh, constructive or reassuring to, to our clients. In, in other words, that there's something to do about it. Simone, let me ask you, do you think this 
new element of, of science is the future, or at least a big part of the future, in terms of looking after people's day-to-day uh, -day health, but with an eye on longevity as well, that it is a new area that is only going to grow. Yeah, listen, Peter, for sure. Uh, I, we, beside the principle, the four pillars uh, that you just mentioned, which are critical for us, uh, I always like to talk also about the what we call the three C, which is care, competence, and customization. Um, the idea of the genetic test, uh, we have been the first to introduce it, and we are going to be the first uh, to introduce the epigenetic test, is the idea of making a personalized program, a personalized wellness program for each of our guests. So this idea of customization and personalization is super important for us, is super important in our philosophy. And uh, it will continue to be important for us uh, in the sense that we don't believe in the general uh, uh, concept of standard wellness for everybody. Each of us is different. That's what we are highlighting through our genetic test. Uh, and through uh, the new epigenetic test uh, that we do uh, to all our guests coming for our program, which is basically you now complementing the genetic test. And the idea is how can we customize the best program? Because at the end, we want to reach the better result for our, for our guests and our patients. How can we customize for each of our clients the best program for their health and to fulfill the vision I was mentioning to you, helping them to living a longer, healthier and better life? Of course, when after one week, uh, um, then if you want, we can elaborate a little bit on what we are building up to be sure that there is a follow-up. But if after one week, one of our guests is telling, uh, is telling us that we have changed their life, uh, in a sense, it means that we have been able to do something good for them. And uh, this idea of really customization is... Uh, is, is very important in this, uh, in this process. And when I started by posing the question, what does a holistic approach to maximising our health span really mean? Well, you tell me, uh, I take it that it is a combination yes. of the new science that we've just been talking about, but traditional methods as well, and that is optimising our diet and exercise programmes. Absolutely. It's the principle of the four pillars. No? Uh, you mentioned them, uh, the medical nutrition, uh, well-being and movement is the idea that, of course, for us, uh, we're very strong on the medical, so the first pillar is very important, but there are all the four pillars which are important. I was telling you medical is important, but inside the well-being pillar, there is transcendental meditation, which for us is also important. Nutrition uh, for us is critical in what we do. We have people researching on it. Uh, uh, is, a, is really is a fundamental part of all our program together with the movement. And what we are saying is always is that... Uh, uh, there will never be the magic pills which is solving all your uh, health issue, but it's always a combination of these four pillars, which is what we call, like you said, the holistic approach. You mentioned, Simone, that there is no magic pill. And I think that is hugely important to remember that. And, and also the fact that we are, and again, you referred to this, we're all very, very individual. And I think new genetic tests are only, only proving that we're all individual. We all respond to external factors. We respond to food in, in very different ways and also exercise. There's one issue that I'd like maybe Dr. Heine to talk to you about that I'm sure a lot of people come to you and complain about and say, this is something I really want to try to conquer in my life. And that is inflammation. We are all, I think, plagued by inflammation in big part, I think, through our lifestyles and the way that we we work, maybe sitting for too long behind a desk can lead to inflammation. What can we do about it? Oh, well, yeah, it's quite... A complex issue, uh, you know, going back in medicine not that many years, of course, inflammation was, was an evidence, but uh, it's only in the last uh, decades that uh, scientists to, together with, with doctors realized that uh, somehow chronic or underlying inflammation is much more of a problem than that what we thought. Uh, so we have very you know, trivial or well-known, well-known areas like cardiovascular disease, where we know now definitely that the uh, an underlying, uh, very, very slight, smooth uh, inflammation 
uh, helps to actually to to worsen or to develop uh, cardiovascular disease. But uh, this is also the case in many other health areas like brain uh, degeneration, uh, uh, joint, uh, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And that that's why it is definitely important to have a non-inflammatory environment. And now again, it became evident that. Uh, cells, age, aging cells are clearly influenced by inflammatory or uh, it's an underlying inflammatory process. So what to do? Here I think we have many, many tools, natural tools uh, that we should use first before we go into uh, therapeutics or pharmacological treatments. I'm of course talking about not acute inflammatory diseases, but really this underlying inflammatory process. So we, we have, uh, we have made quite some progress in selecting ingredients, uh, nutritional ingredients, uh, plants, herbs, etc., uh, which, uh, show anti-inflammatory actions. Uh, I mean, again, one, one very trivial and well-known one is omega-3 fatty acids, which clearly has an anti-inflammatory action. So w one of our approaches is to, to look at, to even to measure the fatty acid profile and to look at the balance between omega-3 and omega-6 and then to correct the intake of oils and, and, and fat. So let's just look one, one example, but we, we have now, you know, we are developing, we have developed nutritional uh, supplements that we will, will give according to which problem we face or which uh, program we, we, we do at the clinic. So uh, it's, it's still actually evolving and, and progressing, but we, we have come much fur further in, in knowing what natural ingredients we can, we can actually uh, use and, and recommend to our clients. And presumably simple or relatively simple lifestyle changes as well can go a long way towards reducing inflammation. Absolutely. And, and that, that's why in, like in, in every stay at the clinic, uh, using this the pillars, the, let's say the three pillars, plus, of course, the, the medical assessment. We work uh, in harmony, you know, with nutrition, with physical exercise uh, modifications and with uh, wellness uh, approaches going up to the, or down or up to uh, mindfulness and meditation. Uh, because all these interventions or modifications uh, can be favorable for an anti-inflammatory or uh, antioxidant, antioxidative uh, biology or, or metabolism. Simone, the clinic is part medical center. It's a part wellness retreat. I am curious, these last 12 months that we have all gone through and endured, and it isn't over yet, but we're getting there, there's light at the end of the tunnel. How have you dealt with COVID? Well, listen, I would say from, um, we had, of course, 97% uh, uh, of our clients were coming from outside Switzerland. Uh, so for us, of course, the travel ban has been, uh, has, has unfortunately stopped a lot of our clients for uh, uh, coming to us and, uh, of course, in view of the situation, in view of the fact that uh, uh, since several, uh, all uh, uh, the basic, uh, the base of our uh, programs uh, was the strengthening of the immune system, of course, was, <laughs> in a sense, a very hot topic for them. Um, so from this point of view, it's been uh, quite difficult for us. From the other point of view, being not only, like you said, a wellness place, but being a full-fledged hospital is making our life, in a sense, easier and has been a very, very high reassurance for our clients coming to us because they knew that we were just not only a wellness place, but in fact, we had all the medical staff ready available for any need. And do you think what we've gone through is, I think it's inevitable, it is going to change everyone's attitude towards their own personal health and well-being and moving forward and, and especially for people in your position running a clinic like yours 
it's going to really upend the industry, isn't it? It's entirely going to change yeah. the way people view the precious time that they have here and now that could influence how long they live and, and what state of health they're going to be in in a few decades' time. Yeah, absolutely, Peter. And uh, uh, of course, uh, awareness is going to be higher for sure and uh, and is higher for sure. There are two uh, subjects. Uh, you just you were mentioning inflammation and uh, and uh, immune system, which now are much more common for our uh, clients today, you know, and for our patients, and they want to know much more than in the past. I give you another example. In all our program, there is a, a medical checkup, uh, which is done uh, the first day that uh, our clients are coming. And, you know, in the past, we had a lot of clients saying, well, I, do, I did it, I came already last year. A lot of our clients are coming every year. Do I have to do it again? Uh, it's really important. And now all of them are asking for it because they want to have it. So it means that uh, they feel the importance of uh, having their health uh, checked much more regularly than in the past. Uh, and, um, and, and again, uh, I think they all want to understand much more about health and wellness. And do you think we're at much more thinking more globally about this? Do you think we're at a, a turning point in global health? And clearly you cater for high-end clients from around the world. But for other populations, distant populations, clearly everyone has been affected by COVID. And do you think that change in attitude that we've just been talking about will reach far and wide so that everyone will, will think about health in a different way and perhaps everyone responsible for thinking about health in a different way from, from governments to, to health authorities in, in different countries? Um, listen, that's our hope. Um, I don't know if this uh, will really happen. You were mentioned in nutrition. We know how important is the nutrition you know, for, uh, for our health. Is uh, this uh, pandemic uh, really has the pandemic opened our eyes, for example, on a different way that we have to think about nutrition? I don't know. I'm not seeing today the changes that I would have uh, hoped to see. But let's say for sure people uh, will want to know more. And that's, I think, it's, it's important to start uh, a process, uh, to start a process like, that, like we said, requires uh, some effort uh, no? from our side. Now, you mentioned, I think you both mentioned that uh, your clients will, will generally come and spend a week with you, quite a, an intense week in terms of tests and uh, perhaps a, a re-education in terms of, of people's health. I'm curious what happens after the week and, and how long the, the very positive yeah. experience of being with you for a week, how long it actually lasts? Do people... I suppose, learn lessons about themselves and, and implement new lifestyles. Yes. Listen, I let then maybe Adrian uh, answer to you about the effect of our therapies, uh, which are lasting for, of course, for, uh, for many months. But uh, your question is, is really fundamental and critical for me because uh, this has been my question uh, immediately when I came. And the, the question was, how can we continue to help our client uh, once they have left uh, Clinique La Paris, because for sure one week, uh, it's, you can really change, like we were saying before, uh, the life of our people through education, making them discover the four pillars, what do we do during the week. But then uh, my dream was to follow up uh, with, uh, with our clients once uh, they, they leave uh, uh, CLP. That's why we have uh, created, we uh, started to create this network of uh, uh, daily, we call it uh, a city hub, uh, daily wellness place, uh, uh, because Peter, basically 80% of our clients are living in uh, 16 cities all around the world. So if we are able to have a small CLP in all of these cities, uh, we will be able to follow up with, with them on a daily basis. So I would like them to find our nutrition uh, uh, philosophy, uh, our movement philosophy when they are back home. Uh, and that's also the reason why we created this uh, line of product, which is called uh, Holistic Health, which was for us a way of uh, giving the possibility to our client to, to have a piece of Clinique La Paris with them uh, uh, once they leave uh, Switzerland. So, uh, Dr. Heine, the, the same question then, maybe from a more of a, a medical perspective. And I suppose a, a cynic looking on could say, well, clearly it's a, a very beneficial week 
that your clients will come, experience, do the tests and learn a lot about themselves and pay a lot of money for. But how long do those benefits last for? So maybe first I would like to say that uh, like since I joined the, the clinic and even, even before our attitude and our programs, they were, have always been focused on a long-term action in terms of what we give as uh, therapy and uh, supplements, but also in, in terms of what we instruct our clients. Now, I think we are very happy because we have uh, a great return, a recurrent percentage of, of returning clients after one year or one and a half year or two years. So it, it allows us actually to, to observe whether they were able to implement lifestyle changes. And I'm not saying that the majority are doing them, but a certain percentage that we see on a regular basis, we can construct with them lifestyle changes. And there were, there's some very satisfactory changes that, that would be observed. Certainly with, with uh, what uh, Simone said, with this setup, uh, with, with new tools uh, and applications where we can better keep in touch with the, with the clients, this will even improve. But I, I would say we're, we're probably already quite pioneers in, uh, in implementing long-term uh, changes just by also by bringing the clients back by a certain uh, connection that, uh, that has been created over the years with our, with our clients. And I ask the question in part because people will be familiar with the, the concept of a yo-yo a diet. They will go onto a diet for a week or six weeks and they'll achieve a certain weight loss, but then that weight will, will yo-yo. It'll go up and down and up and down. And the battle for a lot of people isn't body, but it's mind. And it's a focus on what the ultimate goal is. And uh, I suppose one concern could be that once away from the environment of somewhere like a, a clinic like yours, that people's minds will will move on to other things, to to family issues, to school, to the children, to the the car that needs fixing, or whatever the the daily problem is. And and generally, this is a problem for so many people that their attention focuses away from their health. I guess the challenge is to to get that attention span to stay long term. It's definitely a challenge. Uh, I, I, I'm completely, I completely agree with you. Now we we know this challenge, and that that's why during let's say only a, a week of, of stay, we work in between between the doctors, between the dietitians who all have a behavioral psychological uh, training. We have psych psychologists. We really work on the mindset that the client is going back into real life. So we, on, on the one side, we, we want to offer him like a, a dream at the clinic, but we, we don't lose the connection to, to real life. And that's, that's a very important point. There is, Peter, one story that we are used to tell about, you were mentioning now the weight management uh, issue. Please. And we have a lot of clients calling us and saying, if I come to La Prairie for a weight management, how many kilos do I lose during the week? And we always say, if this is your approach, don't come to La Prairie. You should ask yourself how many kilos I, I'm losing in one year's time, because that has to be your, uh, your target. And if you will come to La Prairie, we will tell you the right strategies to make it, but not in one week, in one year. And Dr. Heine, you just uh, use the expression, uh, the dream or uh, uh, spending a week at the clinic is uh, like a dream-like experience. Simone, is it like that? Well, let's say we, are, we, we also want to make the experience uh, unique for our uh, clients, for sure. So there must be, like you said, the mental part is very important. So there must be the right mix between uh, the therapies that we uh, offer to them, as Adrian was saying, uh, but also the education and the overall experience uh, that they have during the week. Um, we have uh, over 70% of our clients that are used to come back. Some of them are coming back since uh, 30, 40 years. Uh, so um, again, uh, for us, this part is really, is really crucial. We are used to say that uh, our most important marketing is the word of mouth, no? because that's in reality... 
uh, the most important marketing that we can have. People that are getting results coming to us and are no, recommending Clinique La Paris to friends and, and, and families members. Let me ask you both in closing, um, and I often ask my guests this question, in terms of what you yourselves have, have learned during your careers about health and wellness, how do you apply that knowledge to yourself in terms of your own daily wellness regimes? Is there one or two things perhaps that you can be specific about that you insist on doing every day because you know it is going to be very beneficial to your own longevity? Dr. Heine first. With pleasure. I, certainly, I, I like many of us went went through stressful times, through overworking, uh, almost burnout. And yes, what I learned is that the, the work life balance is just not just like a slogan. Work life balance. It's 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 really about work life balance, right? Uh, because the let's say the recovery can be very concentrated. It can be you know, several days vacation, but it can be a, a few hours. What is clearly important has even an impact uh, on, on longevity and uh, brain health, uh, brain plasticity, is, is that we need to learn, we need to, uh, to acquire tools to make breaks, to, to like separate work from life in the morning, to get into your day with, personally, uh, I, I, I do it with, uh, with G, G Gong, uh, uh, others uh, do it with, with meditation or, or whatever. G Gong, what's that? The G, G Gong is actually the, the Chinese type of chi, Tai Chi exercise. So it's, a, it's a combination between uh, breathing and moving exercises that bring like a certain harmony of your inner energy flow and which puts you somewhere in, in the somewhere in, in the middle of the of the nature of the world. This I think is extremely important. Of course it has to be combined with a, with a healthy diet, with some uh, regular exercise. But again I think the important thing is that it's not that you you need that many hours. If you, you can if you if you follow a, a certain minimal routine uh, according to to what personality you can you can uh, concentrate recovery also in uh, in a shorter time it just has to be done you know it uh, you have to avoid to to just go into in to bed with the routine uh, problems uh, so it's, it's it's not easy it's not easy to do it but you have to acquire that well that's the issue the big issue isn't it Simone, that we all leave busy lives these days. We're all, we're all trying to multitask and, and probably fit in too much work. So right. I'm curious, what, what's your daily regime? Personally, I'm, uh, I have a, a one-hour routine in the morning that is really precious for me, which is done of uh, 20 minutes of yoga, uh, 20 minutes of transcendental meditation, uh, which uh, again, if I can suggest to your listener, is really a life-changing uh, routine uh, to really to include this uh, twice a day, these twenty minutes for uh, for practicing meditation, um, and then I I'm used to have a twenty minutes of visualization about my day, the objective, and and what I want to reach, and of course I'm I'm. Uh, I'm using our detox supplement in the morning, which I find very useful. And uh, plus there are all the very important uh, guidelines about nutrition that we all know so well. And in particular there, I would uh, suggest to lower as much as possible animal protein. And um, of course, in our case, we have this big chance of uh, having uh, all these therapies and research and supplement, which I'm used to take with the, really um, astonishing result from this point of view. And do you have a vision for your own longevity and your own health span? Are you the kind of person who actually thinks about what it's going to be like or what you're going to be like in terms of your, of your physical and, and me mental capacity in the decades to come? Do you have a goal? Well, listen, first of all, I think that uh, uh, what you said is very important for us. We have always to think about what is going to happen in the next 20 years in our field 
We are just now doing um, quite important research about the future of, uh, of longevity, so what's happening. And it's, it's really super interesting to interview all these people and to understand from all the people working with us uh, uh, what could be the future in our field. Uh, personally, you know, I, I, I like the idea of doing what I do for the next 50 years. So I need to stay fit and uh, I need to be able to do this uh, at least, uh, I say, for the next 50 years. So we could give us uh, the goals of uh, having the, net po the next podcast together in 50 years. So we could already book in our agenda the next po podcast in uh, 2070. What do you think, Peter? That is a great goal. And, and let's hope we can do that in person rather than the <laughs> right. across the internet like we're trying to do this one. Look, both, uh, this has been a really fascinating conversation. You mentioned uh, so many conversations about longevity. That's exactly what we do here. And it's really good to collaborate with you on that goal. Thank you both very much. Thanks. Thank, Thank you. Thanks, great. Take care. And if you would like to find out more, I will put some links and some details into the show notes for this episode at the Live Long and Master Aging website. That's at llamapodcast.com, double L-A-M-A podcast. Dot com. In social media, you'll find us at Llama Podcast. You can contact me directly at Peter Bowes. The Llama Podcast is a Healthspan Media production. This episode produced in association with Clinique La Prairie. And a quick reminder, we're available at all of the major podcasting platforms, including Apple Podcasts, where you can rate and review us. Do take care and many thanks for listening.